few days ago, I decided to invite some of our friends, my, my colleagues in the ministry to share with us. These are people I've worked with over the years with very highly experienced. As you know, I wouldn't just bring to your way something I know is not going to bless you or benefit your spiritual uh, 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 spiritual growth. So I invited them and gladly they came to the studio and said, no, we're very glad we would like to join you and all that. Because of the size of the studio, we couldn't have uh, a space to really sit down and share together, but I just let them have the discussion. And one of the topics we discussed was blessing. And frankly, at the end of the day, I said, no, you must get to hear this. I decided to bring it your way because I know you are going to be blessed. I was very blessed. I've listened to the message. And that's the reason why I'm publishing it to you, hoping that you also will be blessed because we discuss the issue of blessing. What is blessings? What is God's plan towards his people? When are you know when do you know that you are blessed? Do you really have to be paying your tithes and offering to, to recognize that you are being blessed? There are many ways God has actually blessed us that which we don't even recognize. So these great men of God, they look into this topic and they disseminate it and bring it to your understanding. It's my privilege and I hope that you will enjoy it. And by the way, because the message was quite a long one, because we had to, they had to really go deep into it, we had to break it down into two. So there's part one and part two. There's, I'm going to present to you the first part now. Then, of course, after this, I will allow you to listen to the second part. Um, God bless you. My name is Apostle Hannes Eugene, and I'm here today with um, a great man of God, a father in the land, um, a man that we all look up to, and uh, I'm sure he's going to introduce himself by. Yeah, I am Reverend Chris Oguala. Reverend Chris hmm. Ozi Ogala. Spread the word ministries. John is back. Wow, that's awesome. Thank sir. you. That's awesome, sir. Yeah. I'm sure we have some important topic that we are going to be uh, actually deliberating on today. And by the help of the Spirit of God, by His counsel and by His wisdom, um, uh, we will be well guided. And at the end of the day, every one of us, both the hearers and the speaker here in the studio, will be blessed adequately in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Chris, what do you have for us today? Um, I want us to discuss about blessings. Uh, blessings mm -hmm. um, in a very broad way mm -hmm. we're not going to narrow it um, how do we define blessing mm -hmm. who is blessed mm -hmm. who is the blesser mm -hmm. and uh, we look at it from some other angle it is said that uh, even unbelief some of the unbelievers or people that are no Christians that mm -hmm. Uh, many of them seem to be more blessed than the Christians. Is this true? Um, if it is real, why? What has happened? And uh, we look at it from that angle, and if we have more time, we'll elaborate further. Mm, uh, that's that's awesome. where we're going today. That's awesome. Yeah. I think we need to first and foremost begin to speak about the clear cut primary definition of the word blessing. What do you call blessing? Well, um, people have different definitions they may want to give uh, when it comes to blessing. To me, it is a special favor bestowed upon an individual uh, by God. Mm. God, to me, is the blesser. Mm. Mm. And uh, I'm not saying that it's only God that can bless uh, it is possible also that blessing can come from another aspect. Mm. To me, it is an invocation of God's favor upon the individual. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's the way I look at it, blessing. Mm. So, so from, 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 from what you just said, an, mm. an, an invocation mm. of the favor of God upon an individual. Yeah. Um, favor, that word favor is actually very comp uh, complex. Can yeah. you kind of break it down to us because... Um, what someone else can call favor could actually mean something else to another person. Can you explain, can you elaborate on the word favor, Jules? When we talk about favor, mm. uh, favor is really unmerited in this con uh, concept. Mm. Um, favor is um, when God releases, bestows. Mm. When God bestows special blessing, it's a gift. It's a gift from God. Mm when he bestows this gift in your life, mm. and then you are favored. Wow. And people can look at you and say, hey, this guy, you have been blessed, or mm. God has really blessed you, and, and so forth. 
Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. I think, um, from my perspective, I, I, I really appreciate your your uh, depth contribution towards this topic. Uh, it's really amazing. Um, and you looked at blessing um, as a, a favor that comes from God, which is so powerful. I want to look at it from this angle as well. Um, I think that blessing is actually an empowerment to excel or to prosper in life. An empowerment from God. When we heard that God blessed Abraham, um, I believe that it is an endowment, um, an essence that was released from God upon Abraham that uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, encouraged him. It's like gave him that force to excel in, um, in what he does. Uh, or his primary goal, or the primary uh, goal from God, that primary will from God concerning his life. I see it as that endowment from God that empowers him, elevated him to a pedestrian whereby whatever God uh, wants him to do, he does it and he excels in it. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, that is correct. Um, like we said previously, mm. it is a gift. Mm. Blessing is a gift. Mm. It is bestowed upon true, an individual. Uh, when an individual is, uh, you know, blessed, mm. uh, then he's empowered. Mm. He's empowered to do exploits and mm. rest of them. But when we begin to look at uh, uh, blessing, mm. uh, it is very. It's a compound word, exactly so. and uh, we're not going to be so narrow about it. Mm. Mm. And uh, I think we will also look at whether it is God only that blesses people. Whether Satan mm. can also bless the individual, uh, whether something else can bless an individual. Mm. But um, as Christians, uh, I think our primary aim is to look at God as the blesser. Mm. Uh, like you said, uh, he blessed Abraham. Mm. God is still blessing many people even today. Yes, I so it is, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a right, it's an entitlement. Mm. It's an entitlement. It is a gift. It is bestowed mm. upon individual, and I call it divine mercy. Mm. Divine is divine prerogative mm. to give to somebody um, as he likes. Can we look at that word um, from the definition I gave when I said that it's an empowerment from God that enables someone to prosper? The question I'm actually asking right now: to prosper in what perspective? In what direction? Yeah. Um, when we talk about blessings, people start looking at finance. Mm. People start looking at um, um, how many cars do you have? Mm. Uh, where are you living? Mm. Um, your how fat mm. your bank account is. Mm. Uh, but that is far from that. Mm. Blessings should be looked at. Like I said, um, it is a very co compound and complex word. Okay, so. uh, for example, that is physical blessing okay. there's physical blessing there is also spiritual blessing mm. there is material blessing mm -hmm. there is academic blessing uh there are many ways you can be blessed so we are not going to narrow it and said when you are blessed financially that is when you have blessing there are people who have the financial ability but they don't have the good health That's so blessing would that be Mm. When you have good health, wow. good health, wow. you have the finance, mm -hmm. and uh, academically you are balanced, exactly. Exactly. and uh, emotionally mm. you are up to date, mm. and then you can say, well, this guy is really blessed. Okay. There is a, a balance in a situation where you reach, you reach at the equilibrium, mm. not one blessing to the detriment of the other. There should be a, a balance. Mm. It is in that situation we can say somebody is blessed. Wow. Now let me chip something in here. Now, when you was just talking right now, a scripture just came to my mind, mm. and, and it says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and has no sorrow, no sorrow at all. Mm. Now, you're talking about someone getting to a place of equilibrium whereby... Um, there is, is a balance. there is a balance in yeah. life. Now, yeah. can, can we dig a little bit deeper in this issue called blessing? Mm. Sir, when, when, when we say that, um, when I say that it is an endowment or an endowment from God that enables one to um, excel now or to prosper, the question is prosper in what thing? In what direction? I think I think sometimes we misplace our 
uh, our, our judgment. And most of the time, we tend to think that, uh, like you just said, when a man has numerous or fleet of cars and houses, and uh, in quote, one can view from that point and say that the man is blessed. Mm. Uh, or, or he has been blessed. Meanwhile, if you dig deep into that man's life, you realize that that is not really what God speaks about in view of the word blessing. If I want to say that God wants a man to be blessed, or God has blessed a man, or God has empowered a man to excel, the first thing that comes to my mind is there could be something that God has already arranged for that man in his life. You know, I, I believe that by default that we are brought out of eternity to time so as to fulfill in certain purposes in life. I believe that we are not product of uh, a, a biological blunder or a calculated mistake in life. No, I believe that the day we were born, we were born because God had designated an assignment upon that individual. Now to Mr. A, it could be that God has actually called him to, to be a helper in a given field. And to Mr. B, God has actually called him to be a leader. Now, if he's functioning in that area of leadership, that by default he has been designated by God to function, and he receives that endowment, because I, sometimes I see blessing as, that I don't see blessing as necessarily just only material blessing. I see blessing as that endowment from God that uh, elevates you to a platform whereby you can actually fulfill the given assignment from God upon your life. What do you think about that, sir? Yeah, um, that is correct from the way you look at it. Mm. I remember I know of a brother mm. when he sings mm. and people are highly elated mm. and people are so happy mm. and people are blessed mm. and people look at him and say, oh, God has lavished his blessing wow. upon this brother. Mm. And in that context, in that context, we will look at that brother that he is blessed musically. Mm. He is blessed musically. There is one brother I know also, uh, he's an interpreter. Wow. When he interprets, mm. he is so accurate, he is so good, mm. and he adds humor. Mm. When he's you know interpreting, he adds humor. Mm. And uh, this modifies yes, sir. Uh, to what he does. Mm. And the people are so happy. People are so elated. Mm. Um, and they will say, ah, this brother is really blessed. Mm. So when we talk about bless, mm. blessings, we should not narrow it to in the context mm. of finance, mm. in the context of wealth, in the context of uh, how many children you have, mm. and rest of them will say this person is blessed. That there are many aspects of blessing wow. that one can operate from, mm. depending which angle the blessings of God mm. came to you. Wow, uh, that's the way I look at it. You, you know, you know, one God, sir. Mm. Let me say this: yeah. the first time the word was used in Genesis, mm. um, there was not any physical thing that was actually attributed to the speaker. Look, let's look at it. Because mm. the Bible says, and God blessed them. And the next thing you hear is be fruitful, mm. multiply, spoken words, mm. replenish the earth, subdue yeah. it and have dominion. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. There was nothing physical as to, you know, we mm. understood mm. very well that God actually brought them to Eden after dressing Eden, decorating it, and now he gave them assignment and said, dress Eden. But look at the, the ways that came out of his vocal cavity. Mm. The Bible said, and God blessed them, and he said, be fruitful, mm. multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. And that very thing followed them. And we look at the same pattern. The Bible says Abraham blessed Isaac. We look at the same pattern. Isaac blessed Jacob. Mm. There was nothing that physical that was actually handed over like a physical baton, uh, a real estate or stuff like that. Yet, there was an assignment upon their life. Mm. You know, there was an assignment upon their life. Mm. And they went ahead to fulfill those assignments. I believe that there is a problem. There's a dichotomy that we need to stretch very well here. Mm. That he, 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 and, and it's a trend now in the body of Christ. Christ. You begin to look at people and they are trying to measure blessing only on that uh, aspect of material material things, tangible things. Meanwhile, the first time the word blessed was used in the scripture, there was nothing physical attributed mm -hmm. to, the, to the spoken word from the vocal cavity of God. Mm -hmm. 
So now they are measuring it based on how many cars you have and how many houses you built. And now a lot of people now are now eluded completely. They are like they are derailed completely from the very original track right now. And they are now following, running after those material things because now to them it is a clear cut yastic as to a true measure of what blessing is all about. What do you think about this? Now let's be a little more progressive. Yes, sir. And pragmatic in what we are doing. Yes, sir. Um, let's ask again, let's progress by asking, is it only God that blesses people? Mm. Is it possible for Satan also to bless his own people? Mm. Um, is it possible that there are other ways that blessing can reach to somebody? I think that's the way I look at it. If yes, I should start, yes, sir. Uh, in my own thinking, mm. I think children of God, God blesses them. God blesses them. And um, now, but Satan also can bless people. But, but what we're looking at, the blessing of Satan to me uh, is like a counterfeit. It doesn't last. And um, it doesn't last. And uh, when you are blessed by Satan, you must follow his way. And along the, li along the line, he can take it away from you. But God gives you his blessing without regret. So, sir, if <laughs> if you just right, and you say Satan blesses, bless, yes. yeah, and you say that he can take it away from you, mm. does that look like blessing then? Yeah, it looks at it's, it looks like blessing um, immediately. If that blessing is given to you. We there are some people who have entered into secret society. And uh, because of the society they have entered into, I don't want to mention names, mm. and those people can be blessed financially the rest of them. At that temporary time, mm. you enjoy it. Mm. You use it and influence people, mm. and you make a hell of noise all over the places mm. because it's a blessing for Satan. Mm. Remember, whatever God has produced, mm. whatever God has is genuine. Mm. Satan tried to bring the counterfeit of it, counterfeit of it. Mm. In this context, so 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 I, it looks like blessing. It looks like blessing, mm. but it is it is a temporary blessing. <laughs> it is a temporary blessing. How long does it last? That's another question. How long mm. does it? And at the end of the uh, and at the end of the day, mm. um, he takes you. The giver of that blessing, if it is Satan, where will Satan spend his eternity? It's where you yourself will also spend mm. your own eternity because you are a follower of Satan. And Satan uh, gives you his own blessing. It's deception. Mm. deception. And uh, it's at the end of the day, you will not be comfortable with it. Wow. But contemporary or temporary, rather, you will enjoy that blessing. Mm. Yes. But how long? Is there another question? Now, I think we need to look at from this angle now. I think from, let's say, if I'm a viewer right now, or I'm a listener, and, and now you say that Satan blesses, but his blessing is actually counter, it's not the original. So how can I differentiate between a blessing that comes from God or the one that comes from Satan? Now, yeah, let's take, if you bring a, a normal currency mm -hmm. and bring the counterfeit. Yes, sir. It takes the eye of an expert to mm. distinguish mm. what is counterfeit, what is genuine, what is original, and what is not original. That's it takes, That's it takes the eye of an expert so it, to distinguish. So an expert in this angle right now speaks about someone that have a first-hand, first-class knowledge. Yes, somebody who has a good knowledge. Mm. He will be able to differentiate. Mm. But when somebody is wealthy mm. and that wealth comes from Satan, mm. you will not be able to distinguish. You will not be able to say, this one, he is wealthy because uh, Satan has blessed him. Mm. It's not written, written in, his, in, in, his, in his body. Yes, sir. But what will be the end result mm. is what we're thinking about. What will be the end result? That reminds me yes. of a scripture, sir. Mm. And the Bible says that the blessings of God make it rich and added no sorrow. Exactly. So um, when we look at the blessing that comes from God, it lacks, some el it lacks zero element of sorrow attached to it. Yeah. I don't know if you if, if we're in the same boat here. It doesn't actually accommodate sorrow or pain or regrets mm -hmm. or stress. But the question is, 
does that now eliminate the aspect of working hard? In as much as someone says, I am blessed in life, does that say that I should fold my hands and not walk? Because it, 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 I can go ahead and declare it and tell people I'm blessed and blessed and blessed because the blessing of the Lord make a rich and add no soul. Doesn't that encourage laziness if I should just sit down and not walk and say I'm blessed and expect money to fall down from heaven? No, that is laziness. Yes. And God says in the Bible that he who does not work hard should not eat. Should not eat. Now, uh, it is not it is not good for us to relax mm. and say whether we like it or we don't like it that the divine blessing because we're Christian, we're born again, and the sons of divine, Abraham and we're sons of Abraham, we have inheritance from Abraham, therefore you will be blessed, you will have the money, the money will come from heaven. Mm. No. God shows us the way. God, if you want God to bless you, God wants to see your handwork. Mm. He will bless the handwork you mm. are doing, mm. the job you are doing. When God sees you busy, he will come into your business and he prospers that business. You see, he, he wants to see what you are doing, whether you are disciplined, whether you have the ability, whether you are doing well. Mm. You don't lazy yourself out there and relax and say, come what may, come rain, come sunshine. Mm. God is the blesser. He's going to bless me. Whether I am lazy, whether I work, I don't work. Mm. But I want to tell you that God is not looking for lazy individuals. A little slumber. A little, a little sleep. food in the hand. Okay. Yeah. So, so poverty hits that same, that same person like an armed man. Yeah. You mm. see, in, in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, yes, sir. it says, go and watch the ants yes, sir. and be wise. Mm. Mm. They don't have governor. Mm. They yes. do not have superintendent. Mm. But you see, they are wise enough. They do their gathering in the summer and in the rainfall, mm. uh, uh, in the winter, mm. they enter into their hole and start making use of what they gathered mm. during the summer. Mm. And say, look at this, but they don't have advisor. Mm. They don't have a leader. Mm. But they have that understanding that they need to work hard. And what they get in the rainy season or in the winter, they will enjoy. And what they get in summer, they will enjoy enjoy in the winter. Mm. So, God says we should emulate them mm. and be wise. Well, wow. that's a good advice we need to... So we've actually come to a, a, a situation whereby there is this massive claim in the body of Christ, which we are not disputing, and that we are sons of Abraham, and as a result of that, that we are bound or born to be prosperous in life. Um, what is your input to that? No. Um... Being sons of Abraham, mm. um, belonging to the Abrahamic covenant, mm. does not automatically qualify you to start inheriting things that you never worked for. Mm. God, that is potentially available. Mm. Uh, the blessings of God is at our disposal if we implement the ways and the manner God asked us to take mm. in order that blessing will come to us. Mm. So you don't go and say, well, I'm a child of God. Um, I have a covenant with Abraham. That covenant is effective. Mm. But remember, that covenant is an old covenant, but we have a better covenant. Mm. That covenant is the covenant of Jesus Christ, um, in which Jesus Christ has shared his blood, Jesus has died, we have entered into a new covenant. That new covenant, the book of Hebrew tells us, it's a better covenant built on a, a better arrangement, mm. you know, which Jesus Christ has uh, secured for us. So, uh, Hold on, sir. Are you saying um, that the blessings of Abraham is actually in the old? Is, is it an old covenant blessing? It is still effective. It is an old covenant, but it's still effective. But remember, when you key in into the New Testament covenant, the old covenant falls off. We look up to Jesus, the finisher, and the end of our faith. All right, sir. According can, to can, can, can we look at the, the, the Abrahamic covenant from, from this perspective? Mm. Uh, when we use the word old, is it so to say that it is of the law, or are we saying that um, it is uh, that Christ's covenant has come to 
uh, this new Abrahamic uh, covenant? Well, mm -hmm. the thing is that, uh, now let us look at this covenant of blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to read a little from Genesis, chapter Genesis 12. chapter 12. Good, now, from verse 1, mm -hmm. now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and thou make of thee a great nation, mm -hmm. and thou bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and thou bless them that bless thee, and curse him that cursed thee, and in thee shall all the families of earth be blessed. In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Before you respond to that, please, can you reconcile just Genesis chapter 12 with Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, down to 29? M maybe I can read. Then okay, you read. can actually explain all this to us. Okay. It says, verse 14, uh, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the man of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulled or added thereunto. Verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed, singular, where the promise is made. He said not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to this seed which is Christ. Verse 17, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ the law, in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. 19. Wherefore, then Sabbath the law. It was added because of the transgression, till the seed should come, to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Verse 20. Now a mediator is not a mediator of the one, but God is one. 21. Is the Lord then against the promise of God? God forbid. For, it, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteous should have been, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture had concluded all on the sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. 22. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should after what be be revealed. And I can stop here, babe. On, on our spectre, you can read down to verse 29. But I think uh, if you look at verse 29, it says, And if you be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, you don't create a dichotomy so much mm. between Abraham and that of Christ. Mm. Now, there are three key words from what you have been saying. Mm. One is promise. Mm. Two, faith, mm -hmm. and three, to those who believe. Believe. Yes, sir. These three things are essential. Remember yes, when we talk about the old, old covenant, yes, sir. we talk about uh, Moses. Yes, sir. The covenant started with Moses. Yes, sir. Now, Abraham lived under a different dispensation, dispensation. Oh, which right. is not the dispensation of law. That's because true. law started with Moses. Yes, sir. The covenant of Abraham and that of Jesus Christ yes, sir. is, you know, the same thing. It could be put in the same place. Mm. But you appropriate mm. what belonged to Abraham mm. as spiritual children by faith. Mm. The faith you have in Christ wow, Jesus. Wow, this is awesome. Sir. And now it's a promise. Yes, sir. That promise is not appropriated or annulled. Yes, sir. It fulfills mm. in Christ Jesus. I feel the That is where we can so much. Mm. And then to those who believe, mm. it's not for everybody. Mm. It's for those who believe awesome. and those who have faith awesome. towards the promise Ooh. and they begin to appropriate yes, sir. that which has been promised. Mm. That's mm. how it is. Thank you very much. Wow. You, we, we can't even explain further. This is, this is precise. This is accurate. This is awesome. That means 
the uh, the blessings of Abraham could actually come up. And that means originally mm -hmm. it was actually relegated to the Jews. Not until Christ appeared. Mm -hmm. And now Christ now in Christ we have access. Access to what God has promised in the my beginning. My God, my yeah. God, my God, my God. Yeah. So I'm learning a lot here. I'm yeah. learning a lot. You know, it's good to sit with elders like this oh, and you God. get fed. Mm. Praise God. But don't forget for us to continue with this program. You must you have to subscribe. You have to share. Share to your people. If you have been blessed with this message, give it a thumbs up. And also you can subscribe so that when the first message, when any time we publish our message, you'll be the first to receive it. So love, share, and share the word of God to other people and remain blessed. God bless you. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you come back and listen to more. Don't forget the part two. Pay attention to it and be blessed. Bye-bye. God bless.